Yeah, I think uh, for uh, I'll just uh, like one or two days before I saw uh, one guy who was uh, uh, writing uh, some book and he made a trailer for his book. So just just to to uh, build awareness uh, around the book, he made a trailer and 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 you know, for example, for for Gen Z, if you want to show uh, something for them, they are really in this video. Uh, I, I, I have a son and a daughter, and, and uh, they are like uh, all, all day on their on their mobile and, and uh, on the desktop. And so, if if you want to to get their attention, you have to uh, have to show them something. Welcome to one more episode of Zero One Cast, uh, a place where humans create and machines dream. Uh, we received on this episode uh, Salai Erving. Salai is one of the organizers of the Budapest AI Film Festival, uh, the first AI Film Festival from Hungary, uh, which uh, also partnered with us. Uh, we were helping him with the creation of the movies and also to bring talented people to the competition. Uh, yeah, he's basically uh, working with copywriting maybe for 30, 40 years. He made many commercials. And yeah, it was, was really nice uh, conversational about ethics, about creative process, about many things. So Mauricio, what's your thoughts on the conversation? Yeah, Irving was quite an experienced guy. Like he knew a lot about everything related to the advertising industry. And that's what was quite interesting to have a peek on his brain about that. But what really blew me away on, this, on our talk was about how much the culture of a person impacted the content of the submitted films on the festival, like someone from Brazil, from someone from Europe, from someone from the US, from someone from China, like how much difference, different movies he saw just because of this, this, this small factor that really, really is really, really interesting for me. And yeah, I hope you all like it too. Yeah, that was a great talk. So let's, let's go to the episode and we hope you enjoyed. See ya. All right, welcome to one more episode of Zero One Cast. Uh, so here today we have uh, Erving, which is one of the organizers of the Budapest AI Film Festival. Uh, this is the, the first um, AI Film Festival from Hungary, uh, which is very interesting, right? We are seeing these festivals popping up everywhere. Uh, and yeah, uh, maybe so. Welcome, uh, Erving, first, and also have here with me Mauricio, uh, my co anchor of Zero One Cast. And uh, Erving, maybe you can start just quick, uh, short intro about yourself uh, for the persons who are listening to the podcast. Yeah. Uh, so, hi, everyone. I'm, I'm Erving Shalai, and originally I'm, uh, ad I'm working in advertising. And also a filmmaker, I, I a scriptwriter, and and sometimes I direct films. So when when like like a, a year or two years before when this big AI boom started, as a, as someone working in the advertising industry, we were really really uh, eager to know more about it, and we we really had this fun to to watch first the pictures and then the moving pictures, the films. And I thought that it would be great to to have the first AI film festival in in Hungary. So I just jumped into the middle of it, and didn't know that it is going to be that tiring and <laughs> <laughs> and had to concentrate so many things. But uh, it's fun. Great. I uh, think thanks for the short intro. We'll get more deeper also in your background and your experience uh, around the podcast. But yeah, that, I, uh, I like to start uh, also with other guests. So before we talk about AI, which is the main focus of our podcast, AI, AI filmmaking, creativity, uh, uh, how is the Irving before AI? So how was your woke routine and your creative process before AI? And how did it change after AI? I mean, you as a person, and you're as a creative on the agency. So talk about your, your routine as a creative before AI. And if AI changed something on your routine as a creative, what's changed? How is your routine right now? Well, uh, actually, 
in in sort sort of way it, it didn't change too much because I think the base of creativity is is inside you. It's it's your ideas. You have to uh, find out something, and it's uh, it's not uh, the matter of uh, uh, execution. I mean, we work a lot on 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 the fine tuning the execution, but but the core of uh, creativity is is coming from your your human uh, brain and and soul so that part i think haven't changed so so when when somebody say oh ai is gonna kill uh, the creativity i would say no ai makes uh, creativity uh, easier to express and uh, so that's uh, the second stage changed a lot that uh, that when when we come up with an idea, even even copywriters, because in, in advertising we work copywriters and art di directors, uh, directors, graphic designers uh, uh, together to create some content. So the second phase when we start to execute, we uh, scratch something on paper. It's really useful now to have uh, uh, AI, just like a creative partner. It's like like having uh, uh, some someone a, a graphic designer or or a storyboard drawer beside you and having a conversation with with him and and uh, just uh, scribble down and and then then you see something which is close to to the desired uh, art that that you want to develop. So I think that that is a really great. Uh, uh, achievement that that you have a partner, even if you are a copywriter. So so the art directors, graphic designers, they say, oh, it's, it's not not a big deal. I, I I can do it in in Photoshop. I can do it uh, in After Effects or whatever. But but for us uh, typing guys, it's it's a miracle that 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 you have something in your mind and you you prompt it and and you see something and and it's easier to explain uh, to, to to the ones who will uh, finally execute it. Right. Yeah. I think this this speed right from I have an idea to have something visual a mock up. It's like ninety percent faster maybe, and I think yeah that that's impressive. But uh, as you said, uh, the most important still are ideas, how we think, our our culture, our observations, and the insight like what you want to create, right? Uh, but yeah, I so think, think yeah. creativity is even more important now because if. Uh, if like like if there is one one person in in a in a village who can make a, a picture take a picture then he's an artist if if everybody can take a picture then you have to be creative to to uh, take good pictures now that everybody can prompt a, a picture or, or prompt a, a video creativity is getting more and more important because you have have to be better uh, in, in in the ideas and not uh, not the the executional part yeah i totally totally agree i think now that everyone can create cinematic images with a prompt right it's really about the idea or the script or what you're gonna do with it right because kind of anyone uh can do it in some way but no one will do it in the same way no one had the same ideas but yeah i also think and also even like uh, critical thinking, right? Even like talking about just GPT, for example, putting aside Mid Journey and Runway. Uh, yeah, you go there, you prompt something, you ask something, it will come with an answer, right? It's not even with multiple results, it's basically one answer. And I think also like the critical thinking is more important than ever. Okay, like uh, what? where is information coming from? Do I agree? Like what, what's the source? So I think on the image and video, creativity is more important than ever. And but also when you talk about GPT and text, the critical thinking is also more important than ever, right? So it's not just about, okay, that's what he said, that's the truth, let's go next, right? So reflect about what AI is putting to you. Uh, does it make sense? Do you agree? Do you think there's some other way and stuff like that? Yeah, totally. And about the, so let's start to talk about, about the festival. So yeah, we are zero one. We are one of official partners of the festival. We are trying to help the festival and bring uh, high quality uh, movies and entrance to the festival, also connecting with the artists. And we also took randomly, GPT took 10 movies from our, on our database. We also give them the code. 
So yeah, like, at do you remember where you are and how when you had this idea, like where you were and where did how this idea came to your mind, and and how did your friends react to the idea when you put the idea and 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 as I know that it's a group of people, you're not doing it alone. So do you remember when and where this idea came to you and how did your friends react? And feel free to talk a bit more about the festival as well. No, uh, just. It's so hard to go back uh, to remember how it started, but uh, I remember that a couple of years before I wanted to make a festival for mobile uh, smartphone uh, films, uh, films made by uh, smartphone, because uh, this is a kind of democratizing filmmaking. Now you have a camera in your hand that uh, like like 100 years before or 50 years before uh, the professional cameras were, were not uh, developed uh, to this stage and uh, but I, I haven't started it and uh, this was always in my mind and then when when uh, ai came came up i said well this this democratizing uh, filmmaking even more it, it, it gives, gives you the the opportunity to to, to mix uh, the uh, shot uh, material with AI, or it's, it, it gives you a really wide range of uh, possibilities to, to shoot or, or, or create some film that, that you cannot shoot. Because, you, I mean, for example, I cannot shoot a film uh, in a deep space or in a war zone or, uh, or in a jungle, but I can prompt it. So it, it, it opens out, uh, opens up all the possibilities for, for uh, uh, independent filmmakers. So it was, so when, when it popped up in my mind, I was really into it. And uh, I mean, friends said it's nonsense that uh, the whole film industry is going to hate you. You're going to uh, steal their jobs and everything. And I told my wife and, and uh, my wife, always says that I have uh, two or three ideas every day. So it's, it, it, it's nonsense. But that time she said, I don't know anything about this AI thing, but I think it's, 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 it's important now. It's, uh, you, you, you're catching something in, in history. It's a, uh, it's a really important point. It's just like being there when, when the, the first movies uh, uh, started or uh, movies with sound or color started. So it's a milestone in filmmaking. And, and she said she, she knows that it's going to take all of your our free time and it's going to take our spare money, but let's do it. <laughs> So that that was really uh, made me the freedom to to work with that. And you need you see there is one thing in in this AI film festival thing that people saying that it's uh, it's not human, it's it's AI. But I I experienced so much humanity, just like you helping. We didn't, haven't never haven't ever met before and. And you uh, made so, so much help for me. But all these Hungarian friends, I organized the festival together. I couldn't pay them a dime, but but they are they are with me. I even we, we even have a, a Oscar uh, winner director in the jury uh, came right right for for the first call. So I I experience humanity and. Uh, People are curious. People want to create. People know that some, something big is happening. So it's it's a great fun. That's great, man. That's really really interesting. Having support from your wife and for such such amazing people certainly is something that it's hard to see nowadays, and especially in the f normal filmmaking industry. Now it seems AI is opening even more more doors. That's that's awesome. So apart from the film festival, you are head of creative in the ACG group. Can you tell us about the company a little bit, your role in it, and how AI impact the company itself? Uh, just I have to correct you a bit because I'm not creative director. I head of copy, but uh, I'm I'm leading Sorry. some creative guys. Just just but but. Uh, take the shine from our uh, <laughs> Gloria from our head, uh, creative director. So it's, a, it's an advertising uh, company with uh, like 120 or 140 uh, 
uh, guys work, working here in all different uh, uh, channels and parts of, of uh, creative uh, work, social media uh, and studio and account people, planners, strategic plan planners. So we do uh, old school ATL uh, advertising and some, some social media, it's also new, new ways of advertising as well. And I think this uh, whole industry is changing a lot So uh, by AI. And I think that uh, people sometimes, like one year before people were smiling, oh yeah, yeah, oh, that's okay. It's okay. Like you, you, you make these funny pictures with, with the cats. Cats uh, wearing sunglasses. You're great. And now we see that uh, in everyday job we we can use it, and not not just or not really for the final product. But for example, I tell you one one example, which is, I think is really cool. I heard it uh, from a colleague. So they made uh, this film. And they want. Uh, they had a casting for the actor, and the, and their actor was in, in that time was in, in the United States. But they didn't really want to shoot uh, the film with uh, with this guy. So what they made that the actor told uh, uh, his lines on mobile. They made the character in 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 the suit uh, which uh, he's supposed to wear in the film. They made the set design everything with with AI. They face swept uh, with the actor, and they made uh, you know the the, the mouth uh, lip sync on on the uh, the exact lines he, he was uh, speaking on on the mic. So the client didn't just see one picture of the actor and and hey he is the here is the actor and this is the set, but he the client could really imagine all the picture together uh, to, to, to make the decision easier to, to pick, pick the actor. So, so you see, it's not the final product that they made uh, by AI. Maybe two years from now, they, they will create the final product, but the, the, the process used AI. And we use it for uh, presentations, we uh, layouts, and, and also we use it for for getting ideas, just just to check uh, one one picture or, or a small film, or just uh, even if uh, a banner on on the internet, how how the background should move, is the cloud is going to uh, move behind the guy? So it's small things, but it makes really uh, all of the advertising tangible and uh, and it's, it's easier to to make the client. Uh, see and understand what's going to happen. Yeah, this story, you, you said, remember me, this idea from uh, Dave Clark from the Cruise Refuge podcast, which I thought was very interesting that say, like, if you want to pitch a film to Hollywood uh, now, uh, this year next, like, you will need to send a prototype of AI of your film, right? Not, here's the script, here's the idea, you no, know, like, maybe it will be a must to submit, like, a film prototype it can be a scene or it can be five minutes, 10, or even like a trailer, which you kind of will be able to do it with AI. What, what do you think about it? Do you think this can happen or it's going to happen? Yeah, I think uh, for, uh, I'll just uh, like one or two days before I saw uh, one guy who was uh, uh, writing uh, some book and he made a trailer for his book. So just just to, to uh, build awareness uh, around the book, he made a trailer and 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 you know for example for for Gen Z, if you want to show uh, something for them, they are really in this video. Uh, I, I have a son and a daughter, and and uh, they are like uh, all, all day on their on their mobile and and uh, on the desktop. And so if if you want to to get their attention you have to uh, have to show them something uh, which is movie like but i think uh, for example in in pitching films in in hollywood maybe you will pitch a film with a uh, pre-made trailer and and show it to the producer and, and uh, then the producer will say yes or no so it's not not enough anymore that you have a log line and you know this elevator pitches that uh, get in the elevator and tell that uh, 
the work in on a Titan. Yeah, incredible, man. And I think throughout the, the examples you gave and everything, it, it just enhanced more and more that creativity is actually more needed in the AI era, right? Like the, the solution for the pitch with the actor is a completely creative solution using a new technology that was not possible before. So these things will appear more and more and more. So for you, what is creativity? And do you have any tips or tricks for people that uh, want to stay creative, like keep creativity flowing? And now, so this, this question is back for what you, you told, that is, uh, there is so many ways of expressing creativity nowadays and so fast, how to like kind of point your creativity to the right direction and not, not just shoot everywhere and like kind of get a little bit crazy with the process, you know? Well, uh, you know, I cannot quote really well uh, Kurt Vonnegut, which is uh, one of my favorite writers, but he said that you have to do your art. Uh, you don't have to uh, care about uh, if you fail or not. You get st start in it and and practice your art, and and then uh, even if 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 it's not good, you write a poem, you you take a picture, you paint uh, a painting, you prompt an uh, AI picture, you prompt a, a film, a video. It's it's really not uh, for you. For example, if, if it's not really for your living, you, you you try to express yourself, you 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 experience, and then by doing you 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 learn it, and you will. I think if you are really talented, uh, you will have your own style sooner sooner or later. I mean, it's it's changing so rapidly that I I I couldn't say that someone is gonna uh, know everything. It's like if you if you want to know everything, if you want to uh, follow all all these uh, picture generating uh, uh, AIs, uh, sun generating, editings, and uh, everything, then you will fall apart. You will uh, feel always uh, left behind. So just there, there to pick your style, there to stay uh, with something or play with with the other tool, and then then. Is just gonna gonna just flow and and you will create something and and uh, and you when when you create it it's I think it's a joy, you you have the joy that that you did something you have a, a twenty second funny uh, gif and and you 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 feel satisfied and then you move a bit uh, further and further. I I wouldn't suggest anyone to start working on a. A uh, whole night movie uh, with runway because that's <laughs> that's gonna kill you. It says you will never be satisfied. Just go one by one. Have a friend with a music band and uh, work on a music video clip and and have fun and don't don't care about uh, how many people is gonna watch it. And and if you don't really care about the outcome, you 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 care about the joy. Uh, and you care about the possibilities you get from generative AI or any AI tools, then I, I would say that, that the outcome will be uh, joyful as well. And not, not just for you, but, but for uh, other people watching it. Yeah, there's some, some very nice uh, words here, uh, decomposing a bit your answer. And yeah, I think, uh, you know, I, I kind of, I don't try to follow every tool, but I, I follow the market also because I do the workshops and also I'm writing as well and research, but you know, it's impossible. So you really need to filter your sources and summaries and stuff. It's like, uh, like on the beginning of last year when I was quite trying to follow, I was almost burning out. And it's, like, it's not just about burnout, but you have this feeling that you're left behind, but every day I think there's maybe five new tools or something. And I think, people should not worry because in the end, the good ones, they will stay, they will improve, uh, they will evolve. And the ones that are not relevant, they will stay behind, uh, which is basically what's happening a bit with Runway and Mid Journey, right? Uh, uh, so basically, I think they are the most used today. And yeah, the, the good ones, they will stay. And uh, the ones that are not relevant or not useful, they, they will stay behind. And, and regarding the, the, the creativity as well, 
I think I can also mention the the Rick Rubin, which has become the creativity guru since he launched his book and is going to the podcast. He's working for several years on the music industry, but I think after he he published his book and started to go to podcasts, he became much more mainstream when we were mm -hmm. talking about creativity and we, we all love him, most of the creatives. Uh, and, he, and his book said that uh, like being an artist is like a way of being, right? It's not about wearing this helmet and taking it out. It's like every day with you. And also that you should see your ideas or your work as a diary entries, right? It's mm -hmm. like, it's yours, it's personal. So it's not about right or wrong. It's not about people will like it or not, your diary entries. So he always say this idea that treat your art as your diary entry. And like, is, you don't worry if it's right or wrong, if it's being judged or not, it's your personal thing. And of course, if you share and people like it, of course it's great, but treat it like a personal uh, diary entry, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's great. So talking again about the festival and, and what do you think, maybe you can say already, how was so far the reception of the audience and the critics? And how do you think will be the, the, the reception uh, and the audience of the critics also maybe after the festival, if you go to some mainstream media or something like that also, a lot of people, we know some people from traditional industry also a bit like skeptical. So yeah, how was the reception so far and how do you think the critics will receive uh, the festival and the films? Well, uh, first, I, 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 we were uh, talking about this uh, before. And so first I was a bit uh, skeptical that, uh, that the film industry itself uh, is gonna uh, take, take a distance from it. It is uh, like, like this is not art. Uh, art is on, on 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 only shot in on film and everything. It's it's some something for uh, for real uh, outsiders. But but when I get into this, I I realize that I got really a great uh, uh, human helps for for everyone from 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 directors and and uh, uh, people in film and industry. I get uh, uh, some 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 helps from from the mainstream media. We had some uh, because I, I know that usually you have to pay a lot for these articles uh, writing about your festival, and they they uh, came to us and and uh, made it uh, free of charge, and they are really. Uh, enthusiastic about it. They want to come, come there. They they ask if they can have a bigger role, if they can can uh, be the part of the jury, or or just uh, uh, be the part of a kind of uh, maybe it's too too great words, but revolutionary movement of of filmmaking. So I I experienced. Uh, we have the par as a partner of MOME, which is a, a, a university in, in Hungary and uh, of uh, preparing artists. Uh, and, uh, and so wherever I go, I get uh, helping hands. In, in my advertising uh, company I work for, they help uh, me a lot. Uh, and all these friends in the jury, uh, animation director, uh, uh, the head of head of the jury gave, gave me a lot of uh, help to organize it, and and all, only the uh, even the the basic thoughts what what uh, this festival, which directions the festival should go go around. So it's a it's a really nice, pleasant surprise how people reacted. Of course, there were some uh, you know you you make a Facebook uh, advertisement and, and you have these angry faces and the uh, haters, uh, yeah, <laughs> the haters. But uh, I think uh, if if uh, someone is hate, is put a hating angry face on each of your posts, he's not a hater; he's a follower. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, when when you go to social media, you, you will find find these guys, and and sometimes they have the point. So, so they, they, they have a, a critic way, they are skeptical or they are afraid of uh, all this uh, changing world. And, and, and it's a really basic instinct to, to be afraid of uh, the changes. So it's, you shouldn't hate someone by, uh, because uh, this, this person hates AI, because maybe just afraid of losing uh, his or her jobs.
Yeah, just an interesting uh, about topic about this. Yesterday, I was on the Twitter Spaces connecting with other creators, which is also a nice experience. And I was hearing even about their personal stories, right? So even like people who are depressed or were like some difficult time in life and like when they found AI, they become really creative again and kind of brought them back to life again. Uh, other person talking that uh, she had some kind of uh, autoimmune disease, so she likes to paint, but she's shaking a lot. So now she can create with AI images again. So she's really also like back to life again. And I, I'm hearing more and more of these stories uh, with people that are becoming, even people who are already creatives, being exponentially creative now with AI. And I think an other interesting uh, talk I heard yesterday uh, evening, uh, I'm really sorry I don't remember the name of the person, but he basically started to print his AI art and he, mm -hmm. he kind of created this like mobile shop with his uh, wife. So they mm -hmm. go to parking lots and places, they open the car and they start to sell their, their work. And again, and then there was this lady uh, passing by and say, hey, I will take the job. It's taking our jobs. And and he say, no, come on, like, stop here. Let's talk about it. L let's have a talk. And she stopped and they start to talk. And he was explaining to her that before AI, he didn't have a job. It was really hard for him to find a job. And now with AI, he has a job and he's selling his own art and he's being able to pay uh, his bills. So we basically, they enter on this like healthy dialogue where he could argument and explain her that it's not like that. And, and then he also said, okay, do you know someone that lost his job? Uh, for Can you tell me like one person? She said, yeah, no, but the newspaper is telling me. So, you know, but then he basically, he was able to have a nice talk with her. And, and he said that in the end, she said, oh, thank you. It was nice that I met you. Now you explain me like, uh, I understand it's not like that. So I think yeah, more and more of this uh, paradigms uh, paradigm will be broken, right, with time. And yes, yeah, but you see, it's not. Maybe some people are going to lose their jobs, but I definitely. think definitely, definitely, but not really losing. If they are changing the jobs, so I'm old enough to uh, to remember advertising uh, at the uh, dawn of computers. So we have the graphic designers with pencils. And they uh, scratched everything on paper and went into this studio where uh, the computer operators were sitting. So the, the, the graphic designer, the art director, didn't uh, have a computer. He went with a paper and a pencil and told it to the computer designer to, to design what, what he already scratched on a paper. Now you cannot imagine that, this. Uh, and then then came, here came Photoshop and, and uh, like 10 years before all the graphic designers could draw pictures uh, themselves. Now I think 80% of the graphic designers cannot really hand draw. I mean, not, not in artistic level, but, but they can use Photoshop and all these Adobe or whatever programs to produce, create art uh, themselves. And maybe like in five years, they will not uh, use Photoshop. They will use some some uh, generative AI based uh, software or, or whatever to generate something. But but again, the the creativity, the idea itself is it is coming uh, from the creative. Just the tools are changing. And yes, the cha the tools will will change and and is they are always changing. You you are not uh, no Can't no one. Uh, uh, producing horse carriages anymore, but people uh, producing cars. And, and when they stop producing cars, they will produce, I don't know, spaceships or whatever. So <laughs> people going to have jobs, hopefully, uh, or of the, if they lose their jobs, it's not really because of AI. They have to step forward and forward, and, and AI will make their jobs easier, just like a washing machine uh, made uh, women's life easier so that then they, they can spend more time uh, for, for studying and then, then they can be uh, equal with, with men uh, by, uh, in, in the history just, just because they didn't have to wash all day in, 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 in the river. All right. Uh, yeah, talking about uh, 
revolution, being part of a revolution, you were telling that some people were writing you about it. So uh, I think, you, as you said, you, you had some experience also in the tradition of filmmaking. You, you did some like uh, real normal movies without AI some years ago. So for you, what, what are the main impacts and transformations that AI will have on the classic filmmaking industry? Not just about advertisement, but really talking about cinema now, like how, how do you, how, how do you see this impact? Which kind of impacts and how fast it will be for you? Well, it's really interesting because uh, I think uh, the it's like the uh, big budget filmmaking won't change uh, that soon. I think I think this uh, the AI is uh, for this experimental stage is a great help for for. Uh, uh, smaller filmmakers or uh, independent filmmakers uh, because it's giving great tools. But I think uh, the, the generative AI will be built in uh, all those uh, softwares and all those tools that, uh, or, or even the cameras that even the blockbuster uh, filmmakers are using. So, so it will uh, be a great impact on on the big filmmaking. Just, but just to tell one. Small example, uh, for example, if you are making a documentary movie and you have a conversation in, for example, in a bar and there is a background music, you cannot cut uh, the conversation because uh, because there is uh, this music and, and if you cut it, it's, it's, it clicks. And also maybe uh, some, some uh, uh, um, so the, 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 you, you can, cannot play that music. Let, let's say that uh, some Beatles song uh, is at uh, the background. And now with, uh, with, for example, an AI tool, it's easy to separate uh, the music and the, and the conversation, the, the speech, and uh, then you can you can cut it. You can put put together a nice uh, uh, conversation in a documentary. And this is a really really small. Uh, thing which which can be uh, achieved by AI, but but for for in uh, independent filmmakers, I think it's it's going to be really big uh, the this uh, this year, and I think for uh, music bands, for music videos, uh, this year is going to be uh, at the paradise. They they will uh, shoot and AI animate uh, and and make this. Uh, brilliant uh, mixture of uh, of uh, executions but uh, but just to go, to go back because i think we had an internet issue and Mauricio asked a question about the criteria uh, in uh, whether just judging or uh, put some stand standards on on ai films and uh, Classical way made films. I don't even know how to express, it, but 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 uh, or uh, the original films. It's really really hard, and and I will have a conversation with our jury because this uh, the technical background is changing so rapidly. So so if someone made a movie half year before and it was brilliantly executed that time. It's uh, looking back half uh, half year, like six months or maybe two months. It's like you would feel poor quality, but it's not uh, because of uh, the artists. It's because uh, uh, it's like like when you have a colored movie and you uh, get back uh, look look back these uh, black and white movies with uh, I don't know like uh, twelve frames per second. Uh, it's moving like like uh, this. Uh, you would feel that, that that pure quality, but but uh, the creative idea, the the story behind, uh, can be measured. So I I, I think we the, our criteria is to to be original, to tell tell some story, to to give some message uh, through these videos, and. Of course, if, if it's if it's beautifully executed and crafted, uh, and that's a good good point. But but we will we will search uh, for something uh, bigger than than just putting together brilliant pictures and uh, uh, made made by AI. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, the, the, the criteria topic is definitely very tricky. I can say also my, my personal experience with the website, right? With Zero One Cine, uh, like uh, how to what evaluate, right? Because, and I think one of the important things for me, which I evaluate is the, how, how the artist overcame or overcome creatively the technical limitations of the tools and the platform. Right, we know that we have issues with character consistency, for example. Or we know we have other issues with blurring or coloring, and like, and I think for me this is like a big weight on my internal math. Like, how, how the artists over overcame overcome this technical limitation of the tool that we have today to tell his story. And after that, I think also as we are saying, the story itself like doesn't make it feel something. Does it? Uh, it's not just right about the visuals and everything and uh, we know that there's a lot of trailers, which, yeah, it's nice, but there's not much character development there or more deep to the character. And even on three minutes, you can have a character development, right? If you, if you, if you want to. So, yeah, I think there is, uh, yeah, this evolving, uh, quite fast and the audience that I know it's a bit, it's still a bubble, but it's also evolving fast, uh, and being more and more picky about which are the good uh, and, and and of course there's always personal taste uh, yeah you see the difference is and uh, that uh, if you make the original way if you should shoot a movie or a advertisement then you have an idea you have a story you have you know what you want to uh, shoot and then you find uh, the the tools which are the best for for this story and now uh, you have to uh, turn it backwards a bit. It's, it, we have a Hungarian saying, I don't know if it works in, in English, that we, we buy the coat for the button. So you have the button first and then, then you buy the coat. So, so now uh, the meaning behind that, that you have a tool, uh, uh, generative AI, and you know what this tool can, can uh, produce brilliantly and which, what this uh, what is not the, in the state of uh, uh, make really great. So you have to find out a story or, or the pictures or, or, or the message you want to express based on, uh, on your tools. So it's like, like for example, I, my, I, I always wanted to shoot a movie through these door cameras. You see, it's, uh, it only shoots this angle. Mm-hmm. And, and, and you have to think about a, a drama which is placed in front of a door. <laughs> because you cannot cannot move the door and you can every story cut. happens behind the door in some way. <laughs> yeah. So but it's 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 in front of the door. But but you see you 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 change it uh, upside down. You have a tool you you know what uh, this tool can make and you have to think this way. And it's it's re- once again, it's really good uh, for the independent filmmakers because usually independent filmmakers they, they don't have all the money of the uh, world. So, so they what they have they have some friends, they have a home, they have the street, they don't have lights and 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 whatever and, and maybe a camera, and and that's it. You have to focus your stories uh, on on other things on the tools you have and. This will really move your your brain, your soul to find out some really good stories. I think AI is now widening it because if you have a wall, then then generative field uh, can can make it a war zone in Ukraine, and uh, and you have, have you can put those two friends of yours uh, in front of the wall, and and you 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 shoot a war story. So it gives you the freedom, but also it it, uh, it it gives you the kind of pressure to come up with an idea that that uh, works uh, within your tools. It, yeah, it basically take out some constraints, right? Like you were saying, but also put some other constraints as well, like any other tool. But I think it removes much more constraints than it added, right? Like you said, you can basically shoot anything or change anything. And yeah, I think it, it it's wonderful. And, I think it, it started to connect uh, with my next question because we are basically talking about how this empowers people to tell their stories, right? doesn't matter 
if it's uh, it's a, basically you have a story to tell like it's not so easy to shoot shoot a movie even with the phone yeah it's possible but it's not so easy like you said microphone lights etc and i feel that uh AI is empowering many storytellers or even like, like people who are script writers or who know a lot, read a lot of stories, always wanted maybe to shoot a movie or just want to tell their story. And now they, they kind of can, they can do it in a visual way and in like, yeah, we know it's not perfect, but it's still it's, like, it's impressive to see what uh, people are creating with these tools. And my question is related to the political side of empowering people to tell their stories. We, on the first conversation we had, personally, we spoke about this a little bit. Uh, and I also give this example that where when you have a government, which is more far right, you have not much money for artists or for filmmakers. Usually when you have a government more center left, you have more benefits for filmmakers in cinema. Uh, in Brazil, where I came from, this is like a real example. Uh, two times where government really making like money to artists there was like blooming of cinema cinema and new films and being appearing and on the other hand when we have more conservative governments uh the money was basically cut 100 basically no there is no movie for you to make moves so we were talking uh, and also you came with this idea which i did not thought much about before so yeah now doesn't matter much if it's left or right People can go there and create their own movies, like you're saying, the indie, the punks, and you can just create our story and basically bring our story to life. So can you maybe uh, yeah, talk a bit more about this political aspect of this tool? Yeah, there are two aspects of this. One is uh, the bad news you will, that we will experience now. It's uh, elections in European Parliament and we have elections uh, in Hungary, we have elections uh, for the uh, uh, in, in the United States. So we, we will see uh, deep fake videos and AI at its best. When, how, how it works when, when you put all, all, all the money behind and uh, you want to create uh, uh, fake videos, which is, this is the bad aspect, but it, this is like like having a knife. Uh, usually, supposed to be for cutting uh, food and and uh, feed your family and not uh, killing other people. So I think this is the same uh, with with AI and an art. You can uh, create films. You if you have, uh, for example, uh, different uh, thoughts about politics than than the, the government in your country. Never mind, it's uh, right or, or left wings. Uh, whatever is the political system, there will be people who uh, want to create uh, something, and they don't uh, not going to have funds just because of their uh, polit political views. And this, I think, this uh, can be a great help for them to uh, let their voice heard. So, like, like if you are. Whether you're a small political party and then you can produce some, some material or just have an opinion of the system. And for example, you're, uh, you said a punk uh, a music band and you want to tell, tell it to, to the people, then it gives you the tools to express yourself. So it's, it's kind of freedom. As it liberates you uh, to tell I mean, it liberates you to tell tell hatred as well, but uh, I always hope, I always try to to see the bright side uh, and try to trust in humanity that we have this beautiful tool and we should use it to to express ourselves and and uh, uh, spread love and not hatred. For sure, man, 100%. That's quite, quite beautiful. I think we can relate to that a lot. Like we're trying through Zero One Cine to bring a lot of like information around the filmmaking, like spread the word for people that they can produce their ideas in an easy way. We want to, you know, take complication out of the way. So I think that that aligns a lot and I really like your answer. Thank, thank you very much. Uh, one thing what what do you consider 
there are the skills necessary for a filmmaker to to enter in the AI space and especially to overcome like these barriers that you just talk about, for example? Well, it's never necessary. I mean, if you uh, if you feel feel great to to make stop animations uh, with a with a photo camera and and this is the way you want to express yourself that's it do do it i mean it's not uh, necessary but i think every development is good for you at least to know um, in my job uh, when when in, in advertising and not uh, in filmmaking i I mean, I'm, I cannot edit as well as an editor. I I I I, I, I and don't understand the camera as well as a DOP, or I cannot direct as well uh, as a as a director who studied five ten years to do that. But I have some knowledge. I I made like more than three hundred uh, commercials, and my not not. Uh, directing, but but as as a copywriter, and uh, that that the fact that I know what they are doing um, uh, gives me the freedom to brief them better, to to have the conversation better, to come up with solutions better. So I would say that, uh, for for example, if you're a filmmaker and you don't want to to make uh, AI generated films, but you understand the way it works. You understand the people who want to create films with uh, with uh, AI, then you can work uh, with them better. So the, and maybe later, maybe later you use uh, these tools, maybe maybe not. But but you will have the knowledge. So even if you don't use this uh, this knowledge, it it will help uh, to to work together with other people. 100%, like talking the same language, right? It's it's really important for sure. And wow, man, 300 movies is quite an achievement. Congratulations on that. Um, so we talk a little bit about AI film in advertising and AI film in the movie industry itself. What other areas or markets you're seeing that AI will pop up in this next year? Well, I, I think Everywhere. You know what is the funniest? I didn't. Uh, I, I didn't know that uh, this is going to be the first uh, that our flooding the internet. Uh, the uh, they say that when, when you want to lose weight, <laughs> you know the you see this all these videos. Maybe because I I'm a bit overweight in that, but I, I see at least 10, 10 videos a day. Uh, AI generated guys losing uh, their belly and getting muscular. Uh, so, so it's <laughs> like like in this social advertising, it's already there, and and it's and also behind it. I just today I heard a conversation in in our uh, company that uh, a strategic uh, 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 planner said that I don't need a junior. AI will do it for me. So it's like in, in strategic planning, in 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 researches, it's it's already that the the guys are using that, but but uh, building websites and building strategies in in advertising, it's it's my job. But I but I know, but but uh, I think all all, all types of uh, communications uh, gonna be really around AI and and. Other parts of our lives uh, will, will be led by by AI as well. My son, uh, like, <laughs> uh, he is uh, studying German, and uh, he's he he had to make some some uh, presentation. I think about Düsseldorf or so, and and he he trained ChatGPT to to make the presentation in a really, really uh, beginner level, uh, just not, not making better than, than he, he <laughs> actually speaks in, in German. So it's like 16 years old and, and, and using uh, all, all these tools. Yeah, I also heard people saying like, make some mistakes here and there. I usually make mistakes here on this letter, on this word, so it can be even more 
Uh, perfect. And it, just something I want to mention, sorry, on the question before, which I forgot, I will just bring it back quickly. When we are talking about AI as a tool, right? AI is a tool. You can do good and bad things with it, like internet. And I was just reading today that uh, someone faked some audio of Joe Biden and it spread around USA with like many channels, uh, asking like people not to vote and stuff like that. For us who know about AI, you can see that there are some flaws there, but you know, for most part of people, it sounds quite realistic. And it's also this like radio distorted voice, so it's not super clear. But I was also reading today that Eleven Labs, they found the person, it, I think it was done in Eleven Labs, and they already like banned the account and the user forever. So just one example that I, I heard today and just wanted to bring to the discussion. I just, I just heard that uh, in France, they made uh, 500 videos, deepfake videos of Macron. So it's like, it, it, unfortunately it works. And, and you know, when, when it gets, gets into uh, politics, they, you have all the money behind and, and you have the uh, fake IP addresses. And, uh, and uh, so uh, the problem uh, uh, that, that, Bad people is gonna use it as well. I don't know if in Czech or in Brazil you have this. Do you have this expression that the, the grandchild cheating? You don't you don't have this. No. It's, 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 it really uh, happens a lot here in Hungary that uh, they call by the on, on the phone old people usually by night and they say, "Hey, grandma." It's me, your no, grand. Yes, we, we have it in, in Brazil uh, a lot. Yeah, but basically, uh, uh, like they call it your kidnap or something like that. Well, in here we say that 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 I I, I have a traffic uh, some some problem. I crashed my car and uh, I uh, I have to pay uh, the other car's owner something. Otherwise, I will be taken to to the, mm -hmm. the police. I will send someone for the money, and and uh, this is quite uh, common and and. Uh, you know what? Now uh, all these voice generators, for example, if if I if I have, <laughs> I don't want to advise people, but if, if someone is gonna read, uh, listen to this podcast and uh, get our voice samples, they can build uh, anything with our voices. So they can call my mom, and 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 then she's not gonna gonna feel the difference uh, because uh, she's. She's listening to my voice uh, saying something. Yeah, that's definitely the very scary side of this technology for voice, for video, for image, right? And, but yeah, and also, but yeah, when we, Photoshop was invented, people say, okay, every image now on the news will be fake, will be Photoshop. And it's yeah. not like, it's, it was not so much like that. So I think, yeah, but we, we definitely will need to find ways to control this kind of content. like. I really see Google Images or any like provider labeling, right? This image was created with AI. Uh, this image is like not created with AI. And I think the same for videos. I know that on TikTok, you can already mark yourself. Uh, mm -hmm. So this was created with AI. So they put the label, like the creator of this content labeled as AI creative, for example. Mm -hmm. And I think, yeah, that's one. But in Brazil, this happens a lot, but you know, it's a bit more dangerous. So. They say that they kidnapped you, so they call your mom or something. So a few times my mom was calling me or texting me, hey, are you okay? Yeah, no, because someone just called me, say that kidnapped you or something. So I, I think it was just get a bit worse now. <laughs> no, it's, 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 it, all technical development is going uh, to serve bad people as well. So you cannot, uh, you cannot they are always ahead of us. Good. Definitely, yeah, definitely. And yeah, I have like are... with my mother and with my wife a password word for mm -hmm. for calls. Like if something weird happens, we ask each other the password, and they need to say the, the word so we confirm with each other. <laughs> like it's not written in any place. They, they, everyone needs to remember and everything, but it's it's, it's what we can do for now. I think <laughs> that's a good uh, good idea. And. Yeah. Uh, you out there, if you are listening to this podcast or watching, if you want to clone our voices, please do so something cool with it, right? Tell a nice story or some song. Don't use it for bad. <laughs> yeah. So make, right. my, make myself uh, sound a bit better. Better, please. yeah. Do better. If you want to clone us, do something cool, please, and send it to us. Uh, so what, uh, like, when you were organizing this this festival, what uh, has been like the most unexpected learning or surprise 
you encountered while organizing this festival or anything you want to share with us that, uh, yeah, we were talking a bit about the difference on the cultures you can see uh, with the submissions, but uh, did you have any uh, surprising or any important learning that you would like to share maybe to also other people uh, thinking about organizing some AI film festival or something like that? Well, uh, for the, the films submitted, it's really interesting how different cultures are different. So the, the, the uh, uh, like, like Asian people or North American people or Australian people express them in, in really different way. I mean, their visual culture, the, the structure of, uh, telling, telling stories or, or background, uh, background stories like gods and, and, uh, or, or the characters it's uh, themselves so so wide and and various so it's it's amazing to watch them uh, if you if you want to uh, organize a festival then whatever you thought uh, time will be enough uh, multiply with with two or three so it was really funny. I, I started to organize it maybe in the summer or fall, and I, I wanted to uh, have the event in December. And uh, and the, the, the my friend uh, the said that no 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 it's it's, it's too short time should too short time make make it in March. And now I feel even even March is too close. But but we will do it anyway. But it's it's all the details which. Uh, which makes it really hard. So if you if you are not a millionaire like uh, I am not, and you cannot, uh, <laughs> you are a millionaire. So it's <laughs> uh, so if you don't have a team of like fifty uh, uh, workers and and work with uh, with on on this festival, and you have uh, some somebody for PR and building websites and and uh, even event marketing and and jury itself and you pay for everyone and everybody works for eight hours, then it's easy. Maybe even though it's it's difficult, but if you are a small but uh, enthusiastic uh, group, then you will always have to come together and decide in every questions and and it's 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 slower. It's not that that hard, but it's slower. You have to figure out something uh, all, all the time. So it's but I would suggest that uh, if somebody's uh, thinking about it, do it. It's, you meet so many great people, you meet so many uh, uh, talented artists, and uh, you, will, you will see uh, stories from the world that, that you wouldn't see uh, if, if you haven't started it. Yeah, for sure, man. That's quite interesting time management over even hardness of things to be done. Yeah, I'm yeah. creative. I'm, I'm, I mean, uh, for speaking about time management and managing everything, I have in, in my mailbox, I have 20,000 unanswered uh, mail. So it's just, just imagine me, I have, now I have to uh, answer everyone. Wow. So you need to find some AI assistant for your inbox. <laughs> yeah, yeah, maybe, maybe for the, for next next year. Uh, I think I will. That's awesome, man. You seem to be a guy which has lots of ideas and is a really creative person. So as we are going to the end of our talk today, I would like to ask you what's next for you after the the film festival in March. What's your planning? And if you have any, I don't know dream project, that project that you know you always wanted to do and still didn't do it. Like I know you have the movie, the mobile film festival idea and everything else. So what, what can you talk first, about? Yeah, first I, I told that I, uh, last time that I really have to learn focusing. So, so I told myself, I'm not, now I'm not a creator, I'm a festival founder. So I, it's, it's not uh, creating uh, movie time. It's it's accepting other people's movie time. So it's, I, I'm focused on that. But I really enjoy it. But when when I when we uh, have the uh, event and then definitely after it we have some post communications and everything, I hardly can wait 
to start creating myself as well. <laughs> so I, I, I see all these good examples, all these uh, nice creative people creating so many good videos, and I'm, I'm, it's, it, it feels like I want to do this, I want to do this, I want to create, I want to get together with my friends, my uh, art uh, director friends, musician friends. We have some, some rap singers here to put together something like a music video or, or just tell a story, but, but be the artist myself. Yeah, that's so crazy. Uh, that's, uh, that <laughs> I also sometimes I, I am almost going to sleep and I have an idea and then I sit down mid journey and start to prompt some stuff. No, I, at least then I, I, I'm happy. Okay, I will go to sleep happy. I have a direction. I can develop this further. But and even like ideas for short movies. Sometimes I'm walking on the street or I read some article or I catch some idea and I say, oh, this could be a nice uh, AI film. I can do it five minutes or something, right? It's like two weeks of work, three weeks of work. And it's, it's just crazy. And it, yeah, it's being also for me a big learning how, how to focus and get things done and, and, and like what is important from what is urgent and stuff like that. Yeah, but you see, there is one thing and we haven't talked about this. It's not that easy. It's it's everybody says hey, it's just, just I type like I make a make a movie a prompt blockbuster in 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 one minute and and sit back uh, drink a beer and, and and you have a blockbuster and you earn a uh, hundred million dollars. It's not that. So it's it's still it. I think uh, if you are making these movies, it's it teaches you to. Uh, to focus, to to come up with an idea, then then the come problem. up with storyline, and and then uh, uh, just uh, cut the storylines in in parts, and and make make, make a, a, a storyboard, and then one by one start to move move it, and then think, edit in, and then. Uh, uh, get get the music, get uh, get the sound design. So it's basically it, it's it's like teaching you how to make a film, whether it's animation okay. later. This knowledge you can uh, use later on on shooting uh, uh, an original kind kind of way shooting a movie. So mm -hmm. it's, it's really you you can learn how to make a movie. Otherwise, you just put put pictures uh, after right. each other and, and you have a slideshow and it looks amazing, but it's just a slideshow without story and uh, without meaning. Yeah, totally, totally agree. And it's like, basically we became the whole production line, right? The whole studio, the script, the sound design, the editing, the color grading and everything. And yeah, it's teaching me a lot again, also about the process and as I also mentioned before for you and for uh, here, so I became an like AI filmmaker or maybe AI director by accident. So now I see myself needing to learn more about script writing, learning more about video editing, learning more about cinema and stuff like that, which was like, yeah, I like it. I, 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 love, I love cinema, but I never imagined I would work with that. And it's taking more and more part of my of my of my routine and I, I love it i also love this community all the people i'm meeting here amazing people and it's funny that yeah, like you were saying people from outside the bubble right or they never even open these tools they have no idea they just think you go there slash imagine a blockbuster movie with a guy and a cowboy in space and then they <laughs> i do the whole movie and then you post on the twitter and and then when i trying to show some friend or some other work i'm doing and say Hey man, each of these images I created them one by one, and then I animated them in four seconds clip usually, and then I need to put all of them together. I need to do all the color grading. I need to do the edit. I need to do the sound design. I record the voice of the characters and etc. It's like, like because they have even no idea how the process works, right? I think you just imagine a movie done, right? It, it's it's crazy. Yeah. But actually, uh, like for example, my friends, they, they never know what I'm doing. Like, like I, I really have so many commercials. I had a, a whole night movie, uh, I wrote the script for, I had some short movies, whatever. And you know what they were proud of me? When they saw a can of beer 
And then at the back of the can, can there was this, this line saying that uh, what is the origin of IPA beer. And see, this, this is something you wrote? Yeah, I see, I, I wrote this, but I mean, this is not... Uh, I the wrote biggest, better things than... This. Not the biggest achievement of my, my life, but they were <laughs> proud of me because now they, they can, could understand what I do uh, for a living. <laughs> it was a small part, but they, that, that was a part they could, could, uh, could hook on and understand. I'm still trying to explain my mom what UX design is, I think around eight years. Yeah, one day <laughs> I would get... Yeah, definitely, definitely. So, uh, Erwin, what what you do when you face a creative blocker? What's what's your trick to get the juices flowing? Well, like I don't know. <laughs> I it it I supposed to know. I I, I supposed to teach uh, the juniors, uh, but uh, I really don't know because I I have my my mind works like like uh, 24 hours uh, a day and what happens some, sometimes I, I cannot uh, solve some problem and I have solutions for other problems which is not good uh, at that time but it's, it, it can uh, be good uh, uh, for, for the next problems but you know when, when you have to work on a commercial and, and then, then you have a really good idea about a song it's it's not gonna work because uh, the next day you have to present your idea and you don't you don't have it. But uh, what uh, usually I do is whether drive because if if I drive a lot, uh, I, I I have to drive like like uh, 30, 40 minutes home from work, and then it's uh, switching my mind. Uh, or, or I fight. I have uh, I do boxing and and campo, and then it clears my mind. and And uh, it's really uh, interesting. But uh, after uh, uh, training, I go home and I cannot sleep for two, three, four, four hours. And then because it's like restarted my mind. And then then and then it's uh, then all the ideas are are coming. And then I hardly can wait to come. To work again and and uh, talk with the, with the friends because like what is really good AI could be a partner but but it's it's the best if you have also some some work partners or or uh, art partners and you can have conversations and then when when you have this block the other guy has some idea and then then sooner or later you can help each, each other to come up. And so to get some some other point of views and and uh, it's really inspiring. Very very interesting answer. Uh, yeah, also about the the boxing uh, and the fighting. Very. In I also I like to drive uh, a lot, and yeah, I also have many ideas when I open my fridge. Uh, believe it or not, uh, <laughs> sometimes let's see what's gonna here, and then I open there, and then and I see I'm taking notes on my phone. Oh, I can do this like idea or this. And also when I'm having shower as well, when you know, don't need to think about anything. Uh, yeah, I also have many ideas and, and yeah, walking. And as you said, talking to people, going to events, watching movies. And I think AI can help a bit this creative block. As you said, like thinking about it right now, right? Uh, you're a bit blocker. You can brainstorm a bit with GPT. And like, even when I was, when I was doing the Santos trip, uh, which by the way, today I saw there's 1,000 views, which is really nice. I never mentioned that. Mm -hmm. uh, so like I was trying to like play with GPT. I was basically on the bus to Berlin and I say, okay, on this four hours, I need to come up with the script or a very strong idea for the script or something like that. And most of the initial ideas were like bad or like, because I put, yeah, I want to do like some animation. I want some uh, to be funny with humor, like bring some reference, but even I, I proposed me some directions, right? And they were, they were not funny at all. And in the end, like after, I don't know, maybe 30 minutes of prompting or more, one of the directions I thought it was interesting, but it was just the direction. So like, that was like traveling time, Santa traveling time basically was this direction. So everything else was like wrote uh, manually, <laughs> let's say like that. So like, okay, where are he gonna go? Which gift he will do to which person? What will be more funny on this situation or on this time? So 
And I think, yeah, GPT can, can be our friend to the creative blocker as well. But I think talking to humans is still the best option you can have. Yes, and one more thing that talking to humans, that's a good uh, sentence because uh, what I always suggest to my children that don't listen to music when, when you are on the go. Listen to people. It is, it's, it's listening to other people give, uh, gives you ideas because otherwise you are in your social bubble. It's, you, you have your workmates, you have your family, you have uh, your Facebook community, and you have your music, and, and that's it. You, do, you don't know the world. And, and just uh, going to the subway and not plugging your ears and, and listening to other people or in a cafeteria, uh, just sit down and, and drink your uh, coffee and listening to other people, how they live, how they behave, what, what, uh, what they talk, talk about, that's going to show you how the world uh, works and that's going to uh, give, give you ideas. And that moves you if you are uh, stopped because you see see other stories. Definitely, and we we starting to get close to the end. So I will have one more shot. Mauricio will be one more shot, and we will finish with some sparring quote, with something that we are trying to do here. So my last one will be: uh, which advice you will give, maybe to younger people or not necessary which advice you will give to storytellers who want to explore AI in their projects? Well, that's a hard question, but I would say that dare to fail. It's like, tell the story you want to tell and don't, don't tell the story you think other people want to hear because everybody has some stories and if it's interesting enough for you uh, it's going to be interesting uh, for some some other people so just be honest tell tell your story use use ar or or any other uh, tools just to express it and 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 it's going to find its community awesome man great tip great tip good advice and I would like to close with a kind of a simple but deep question. Uh, oh. So the first is, is there any AI piece that you saw that really blow your mind that you really, oof, this is awesome. And what, which is your main artist slash director slash advertiser, like the main inspiration for you as a creative? Whoa, uh, for, for, AI, which it's not really blowing my mind, but I think making my life uh, easier. I uh, I cannot recall uh, the name of the tool, but there is a tool that uh, uh, can simplify uh, really, really, really long PDFs. So if <laughs> you have a, a 100 page uh, presentations and uh, presentation, and it, it, it can can write in that. Uh, uh, tell me, tell me the the, the uh, this the story in in one page. That's awesome. that's great. That's great because uh, in my work life, sometimes we have to to uh, read a lot and a lot, a lot of, for example, about a, a brand or some tool or, or 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 whatever, and it's it's it can make our our job easy just to highlight the main information so it's kind of blowing my mind in 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 every days what was the other question the uh, your main inspiration as a creative main inspiration uh, i'm a film lover so so uh, all these great uh, filmmakers i would say like like for example when when i see I, I saw Spielberg shooting a music video with a, a smartphone in in one shot, uh, and uh, his chair was moved. Uh, the office chair was moved uh, by his wife. That I think uh, that was so inspirational that that art has no boundaries. It's it's, it's really can can. So be so simple. 
it's really up to you if you uh, just get up from your chair, from your couch and, and start creating. And, and it's going to be amazing. Maybe it's only amazing for you, but it's going to be amazing. And if, if such a great filmmaker can, can uh, produce some, some art with, with really simple uh, tools, and, and I'm pretty sure that in, within one year, all these great filmmakers are going to produce uh, uh, videos with, with AI tools. So if they can do it, then, then you have all, all the tools to, to, uh, to, to express yourself, to tell your stories. Right, very interesting. I, I didn't know about the story about Spielberg. I will take a look on it. <laughs> And so, Erwin, thank, thanks very much for, for this conversation. Uh, it was very inspirational, and, and uh, I really love uh, this talk. And do you have any last uh, words, any closing thoughts, about anything you want to share with our community? Mike is yours. I just come to the festival. I guess it's the 3rd of March in Budapest. It's a beautiful city. Uh, so, so just come here, have fun. It's a small cinema. It's like like hundred uh, viewers can can view at, at the same time. But it's a cult cult place, uh, and we will have a great party after it with with all uh, Hungarian filmmakers uh, and film industry uh, guys coming together, just party together. So I think it's if you want to know Hungary, if you want to know Budapest, if you want to uh, know Hungarian filmmakers, just meet them casually, like 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 I, everyday people. It's it's a, it's a great time. Great. So, uh, you. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, Budapest, lovely city. I love been there two or three times. Um, coming to the festival, please save one chair for me or I will sit on the staircase. There's no chair. Uh, okay. I, will, I will spare some place for you. <laughs> And yeah, man, thank you. Thank you very much for this talk. Uh, we will finish. We want to finish every episode of this brand new podcast with some inspiring quote from people we admire. Uh, uh, last episode was from Rick Rubin. Today I'm bringing that Mauricio brought to us. Today I'm bringing. Uh, I don't know exactly what is the real source of this quote. I saw it in many places, but I think it doesn't matter. Uh, even though it doesn't matter if it's Buddha real or not. What matters is the story, right? It's all about the story. So the, the, the quote is that uh, the beginning is the half of everything. Basically, uh, just start. Everything is hard on the beginning for everyone, but then it slowly starts to get easier. And uh, the Aristotle is also known, but similar word, phrase called well begun is half done. So yeah, just start it. Don't give up. Uh, and yeah, everything is hard on the beginning, right? And yeah, that's it. So thank you again, Erwin. Thank you, Mauricio. And we'll see you next time. Thank you, guys. See you. Bye -bye. Thank you all. Bye-bye.